Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing the Ratcatcher from Platypus Industries. Ratcatcher is a game for one player. I plays in 30 to 45 minutes. You see here on the top, it says the solo adventure game. So let's go ahead and get this. All right, so we got a couple things here. One, it looks like we one looks like we got a dice tray. Nice uh, neoprene snap together dice tray. You can see the stitched edge on it is really nice. You do roll dice in this game when you're attacking. So it's nice to have a dice tray to keep those dice on the table. All right, let's see what else we got here. Got a couple little extras in the back here. We'll save those for later. Got a pin, a couple pins. We got some extra cheese pieces, it looks like. So one of the things you're trying to do in this game is to either collect cheese as the rat catcher or stop the rats from eating the cheese. Here's the game itself. More pens. And then an extra bag of meeples for the different rats. Very cool. That's all that we got in there. So let's take a look at our game box here. So they call it a solo adventure game. And I think that's pretty appropriate. It plays a bit like a, a dungeon crawler, except it's a solo game. So let's see what we got in here. We got a bag of dice. So dice in this game are how your rat catcher attacks. You're going to have access to a certain number of dice. And then as an action, you can choose any number of those dice to roll and potentially do damage to rats. Um, each rat catcher has a different accuracy. So fours might hit on some of them. Some might require fives or higher. We've got some tokens here. These are just for the different power-ups you get. You can get in the game. So you have, for instance, every rat catcher has a, a pink and a yellow ability. And these cubes just represent your uses of those abilities. Here is our cheese. So a big part of the, the game is centered around this cheese. It's gonna be out on the game board in different locations. And if you collect it, you can use it to upgrade your rat catcher. And if you collect 10, you win. If the rats collect it, they actually get their own power-ups and they also want 10. You can actually see it's got some glitter in it because it is a magic cheese. I don't know exactly what type of cheese magic cheese is. Maybe it's a, a Gorgonzola or something. I don't know, but it is magical. Here are our location cards. So the location cards will create essentially your game board. You'll have three at the start of the game. And then more will come out as you play. So we're going to find real quick the uh, zero card. Obviously, we've got a couple other things here, but talk about those in a minute. So the zero card is where you're always going to start the game. Your rat catcher is going to start here. Every spot you see with the little rat icon, that's where rats are going to spawn when you play the card, when the card is first put out. And then you have the big spawn area. That's a rat's nest. They'll spawn there immediately, but they'll also spawn there after each round. Uh, the blue wheel here or triangle here is obviously where you're going to put a piece of cheese. Again, the rats are trying to get it and so are you. So it's kind of a, a race in that way. And then you're going to play two more cards to, to start the game. So let's draw two real quick. Whenever you, you're going to draw them one at a time and you're going to have to place them. Whenever you place them, you have to match arrows, but otherwise you can 
rotate the cards however you want. They don't have to be completely lined up. So I could, for instance, put this card right there because those two arrows match. It doesn't matter that they're all centered and, and rotated a different way. And then if I wanted to, I could go and put this card there, even though it's upside down now, it doesn't matter. Uh, a couple other things that are on the cards. These are mystery tokens, which we'll see when we get further into the box. They give you various benefits, but you're not necessarily going to know what they are. Other bonuses that you can find on cards here, you'll have one of those purple cubes, which is a additional use of that ability. Um, and then we have the same for yellow as well. As I said, you're going to start with three of these out to create your map. And then as you play, you're going to put out more of them. Uh, I believe it's when there's less than two cheeses on the board at the end of a round, you, you put out more. Uh, I could be mistaken about that. Our other cards that we have here, we have a tally man card. This is essentially your cage where your rat catcher has captured rats. So anytime you defeat a rat, you're going to put it in this cage and then you can basically buy bonuses with your rats. So if you spend three of them, you get an extra attack die, which you can use immediately and then so on. If you save up 18 of them, you can get an extra cheese, which is obviously pretty powerful. We got a cheat sheet here. It just tells you how the turn works. So first we have our rat catcher turn. Your rat catcher goes first. Your rat catcher can move. They can use their attack dice. They can lay traps and they can collect cheese, but only if there's no rats in the area. They can also use their purple and yellow abilities, assuming they've unlocked them because you don't start the game with them. And then we just have some reminders down here. And then you go to the rat turn. Rats are going to move a certain amount. They each have a movement stat. Then you're going to set off any traps. So any rats that end up in an area where there is a trap, you're going to activate the trap. Then if there are any rats that bite, they will attempt to bite the rat catcher. Then they'll try to uh, consume cheese, which they'll do if there's five rats in an area with a cheese. And then you'll spawn rats in the rat's nest. And again, just reminders at the bottom here. Our rat types, there are three. So the white rats have a movement of one, no defense. They do not try to attack you. They have no attack value. And when they move, they activate on the rat turn. They are trying just to get the cheese. They're gonna to move to the closest cheese. The brown rats move two, have no defense. They are trying to bite you. They have a bite value of one. And the way that works is essentially all brown rats are going to gang up on you. If their total bite value is higher than your defense, you're going to take one point of damage. You can never take more than one point of damage from a bite on a turn. And they are targeting the rat catcher. They want to go after you. So that's their ability. They're biting. They're trying to bite you to death. And then you have the black rats. Black rats have a movement of one, a defense value of one. So if you successfully roll to hit something, you actually have to use two successes to kill one black rat. They are not trying to bite you and they are targeting the cheese just like the white rats. The special ability of the black rat is that they are breeder rats. Anytime you draw a black rat from the bag, you immediately draw another rat. And if it's a black rat as well, you draw a third rat. So they can quickly fill up an area with rats. So here, we have the different types of rats. So peculiar rats are basically a special type of rat that can show up during the game. And there's a lot of different variations of them. So I believe you're only going to see one of these per game. Um, and you'll likely just draw a card randomly to see which peculiar rat shows up. But I'm just going to flip through them real quick. If you want to look at them, obviously you can see some of them are very defensive and very mean. Uh, this one has a bite value of five. So he's coming to get you. There's all our peculiar rats. And the, again, those will show up during the course of the game. We have our nice little organizer here, which we'll move aside to see our other components. So this is one of the Kickstarter um, stretch goals. And this is essentially a, a 3D version of the 
Tallyman's cage. Um, so you'll put this together and it'll become your Tallyman's cage. Here's our rule book itself. All of our components there. So you're going to choose a character and then you're going to choose a nemesis. And then once those two have been decided, you can essentially start the game. Uh, that's really the only two choices you make at the beginning of the game. As we already mentioned, uh, you can win by collecting 10 cheese. The rats win if they collect 10 cheese. The rats also win if you're defeated and you can win if you defeat the nemesis rat who does not start in play, which is a good thing because they're, they're pretty, um, they're pretty deadly on their own. So again, all the things you can do during turn, attacking, using special abilities, collecting cheese. This just explains the rats turn just like the cheat sheet card, just in a, a more detailed setting. Okay, we have punch board for all our different tokens. So here are our traps. We'll punch those out. These are all our peculiar rats, just to track them on the game board when they come out. You've got tokens to track if your stats go up, if there's extra spawning at rats' nests, if you have to add more rats' nests. Things like that. So all pretty straightforward. And the punch board is really nice. I actually really like, uh, I don't know if it's the finish on it. Um, the numbers pop really well. And uh, I just like the, the overall finish and artwork on the, uh, the tokens. Next we have our nemesis rats. So nemesis rats will not start in play, but they are essentially the big boss rat one of the ways to win the game is for the rat catcher to defeat them, which is difficult to do. And you'll see why in a second. So we have several to choose from. These are double-sided. So it looks like we have a total of four and then our rat catchers back here. So we'll take a look at them in a minute. So nemesis rats have a health value starts over here. If you ever get them down to zero, you win. So their movement, or at least this one is based on a die roll. It looks like, yep, they all are. Based on the die roll, here's their, their bite value, their accuracy. So they roll dice just like the rat catcher does. Uh, their defense value. So a defense of four means you have to use four successes to do a single point of damage to this nemesis rat. The only exception to that is if you roll a six, six are considered mortal wounds and they always do a point of damage. That's going to spawn extra rats and it's targeting cheese. So it's going after cheese. And then you see on the right here, as they accumulate cheese, they are going to basically power up. So the first time, first piece of cheese that the rats get, nothing happens. Second piece, they spawn the peculiar rat. Third piece spawns the brood mother. And then they start getting stats. So brown rats plus one speed, a second peculiar rat, white rats plus one speed, brown rats plus one defense, all the way up till 10 where they immediately win. And that's gonna be different for each rat, at least what they get. They always are gonna win at 10, but they have different upgrades. They also have different stats, as you can see. And some of them, of course, are targeting the rat catcher as opposed to going after the cheese. But that's all four of your nemesis rats. Now you are playing as one of the rat catchers and you're gonna choose whichever one you want at the start of the game. Looks like there are six options now. So as you can see, double layer boards is very nice. You have stats just like the nemesis rats. So here is your health. Anytime you see Anything that has this blue icon, which is the cheese icon, that means it's upgradable for that cost in cheese. So if you gain a piece of, piece of cheese, you can use it to increase your health by one. If you get two pieces of cheese, you can use it to increase your accuracy by one and so on. Here's your movement. Movement not only allows you to 
move from zone to zone on the game board, but also a lot of times it's how you activate your traps. Here's your combat dice that you have available to you each round. And then your three special abilities, your trap, which you'll always start with, and then your purple and your yellow abilities, which have to be unlocked first. You have to put a piece of cheese there to unlock them. So let's look at the Pied Piper's traps. It says that this trap's attack value is equal to the number of common rats in the trap zone to a max of 10. And then you can also upgrade it. So common rats suffer minus one movement with when within a zone containing this trap. You're gonna start with three traps. They hit on a four or higher. And then this I believe means to place them requires movement. But you can see there's quite a few options for rat catchers. Some of them start with defense. This one actually doesn't start with his traps. He has to unlock his traps, which is interesting. When you're placing traps, you can only have one in a zone. So you can't stack traps into one area and just hit a whole bunch of rats. So those are your rat catcher options. What else do we have in here? We have meeples for all of the rat catchers and they are actually Looks like they're silk screened onto the meeple there, which is very nice. We've got the same for the nemesis rats. So the four nemesis rats each have their own big meeple to put out. We've got our wooden rat meeples. which are all essentially the same. They're just different colors. And these will all go into our little rat bag here and get drawn out randomly when we're placing or spawning new rats. And that's it for the, the main box. We did have this one additional box as well. So let's take a look at what's in this. It says it's additional tokens for the peculiar rats. So we got a nice bag to put them in as well. And so these are just meeple replacements to the cardboard tokens. So you can just put these on the board instead of the cardboard tokens. And you could probably just draw one from the bag instead of drawing a card as well. Just randomly pull one from the bag. So that's cool. Uh, the other things we got, we got some extra meeples for the rats. This is what we already had. So we just extras and then some cheese tokens, which are a little bit different. I guess if you don't like the, the kind of a uh, glittered cheese tokens, you got the regular ones as well. And that's it. That's everything we've got for the rat catcher from platypus industries.